Today's Noob Spiro podcast is proudly brought to you in partnership with Adreno Spearfishing Supplies. Go to spearfishing.com.au to take advantage of $15 Australia-wide flat shipping, or better yet, drop into their Brisbane or all-new Sydney store and talk to their experienced and helpful staff. Head on over to spearfishing.com.au. It's the place to go for all your spearfishing equipment needs. Hello and welcome to the Noob Spiro podcast, where we interview experts, authorities and characters on all things spearfishing. Come and join us after the show at noobspiro.com, the online spearfishing community helping you to become a better Spiro. Here are your hosts for the show, Shrek and Turbo. G'day Noob Spiro community, today we will be talking with Spearfishing's original power couple Michael Tukash and Jesse Cripps. They're the co-founders of Underwater Ally Productions, and they're responsible for some really great underwater footage of spearfishing. We're also going to be talking to these guys about gear. They are sponsored rife divers, so they've got some great insights into what makes for some really good equipment. And they're also going to be talking to us about GoPro and digital SLR equipment and how to use those effectively when shooting spearfishing underwater. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Welcome to the show, Michael DeCash and Jesse Cripps. And, uh, so, welcome to the show, guys. First cab off the rank, where did you start and how long have you been spearfishing? I was always a keen fisherman, just obsessed with fishing, you know, all the time, just fishing on the brain, fishing on the brain, um, till one day, uh, one of my neighbours I used to go fishing with all the time, it was just too hot to go fishing, and he said, hey, I've got a couple of hand spears in the, in the garage, you want to give it a go? Give it a go, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> so where was this in West this, this was uh, yeah no, this was on the uh, east coast and uh, just went for my first snorkel in there with a hand spear and we're just blasting moeys and oh, and um, lederick and stuff and after that I was just hooked because you know it's just all the ground that I've been fishing for years as a kid yeah and then just to see it all underwater and you know catch them in a different way I was just hooked but as you progress as you progress you know you. <laughs> Probably should do it the other way around, but you learn the rules and you kind of learn, you know, about the whole spear fishing world and, and how deep the rabbit hole goes, and and then you just kind of progress from there, really. Because you, you you started with a pole spear, didn't you? That's what. Oh uh, yeah, just yeah, just like a sea hornet hand spear. Yeah, you're pretty good with a pole spear, aren't you? Oh, uh, I, I like to use it. It's it's good fun. Um, mm. I definitely definitely try to use it every now and then just to mix things up a bit especially with stuff that you've already shot before it's always good to you know bring well, I, the challenge back into it i don't reckon it is fun in fact i reckon it's the opposite <laughs> to fun in fact i'd go so far as to say it's one step above fishing we, we had a couple of guys on the show in the early days and they told turbo all about the benefits of pole spears and no, they no. went out and bought a 300 hundred dollar job it Actually, lasted I bought about your two pole weeks. spear. I bought, I bought the Rife pole spear, and it, it is a beautiful <laughs> piece of engineering. Don't get me wrong. I love the actual pole spear. It looks really good on the wall. But, <laughs> however, like I was watching I was watching the Underwater Alloy Productions thing of, well, what was it? It's the um, pole spear diaries. Oh, yeah, yeah pole where, spear, something or other, yeah. Yeah, I think it's diaries, big fan. So, they, I think you were, you were, <laughs> and you were nailing to like all these fish, like black spot tuskies and stuff, and I'm just like, oh, boom, I'm going to get one of these and just show the boys how like talented I am. Mate, to this day, I still haven't shot a reef fish with that thing. And, and I just cannot. <laughs> I hate it. Yeah. It's, it's, had like, it's, it's like caused like three major dummy spits. <laughs> Pro- probably it. like the fish are more intimidated than the fact that you're in a Speedo, though. <laughs> if you actually wore a wetsuit, you'd probably get, get, get yeah, some. pretty right. looking man. But I'll tell you what, they're good on the dolphin fish. Yeah. Like, really good. Like, that's yeah, like right. a it's really good like fish to shoot with a pole spear. Like... I think I missed three times, four times with a pole spear, and still they gave me plenty of opportunity to like <laughs> pin like four or five of them. It was just brutal. Yeah. What about you, Jesse? Where did you get stuck? And how long have you been spearfishing? Um, I'm not sure how long I've been spearfishing now. Probably a bit over eight years. But um, my dad used to spearfish, so um, you know, all his stories about going spearing and stuff used to really get me. Um, I used to get really excited about to get in the water and um, we used to line fish and everything off the back of the boat and then I found one of his old spear guns under the house one day and uh, took it down to the local shop to get fixed and they ended up just selling me a crappy little brand new gun which I couldn't load very easily but um, yeah like went down to the local beach and jumped in and tried to shoot some fish but it <laughs> wasn't, wasn't very good you know I went down there in my bikini with a knife strapped to my leg it would have looked pretty oh, funny it's very james and, bond uh, 
<laughs> yeah, yeah with, with some milk bottles as floats and uh yeah I didn't shoot anything and I, I think that was only about six months before I met Michael so when we met we um you know hit it off straight away talking about spearing and scuba diving and all that sort of stuff and then um <clears throat> I think seeing Michael's marlin footage was what really like stunned me I couldn't believe that you could shoot this uh, shoot a marlin you know let alone a fish that would rip a gun out of your hands I didn't I didn't understand how it all worked but yeah it was I was hooked after that so yeah cool yeah so what Michael was kind of like an early mentor for you when you were starting out yeah definitely yeah absolutely cool pretty much taught me everything I know about spearfishing I reckon <laughs> oh cool what um what advice would you give to other people that are teaching people to um how to spearfish Michael teaching people how to spearfish yeah um you know, like offering people a bit of, bit of coaching when they're starting out. <laughs> he didn't really teach me much. He yeah, just said, kinda, follow me. I think it's well. Like, I, I pretty <laughs> yeah. much threw a Jessie straight in the deep end, actually. And, nice. And she just kind of caught up, really. Yeah. I see that. Nice. Jessie's shot some pretty good fish of her own. Yeah. Like um, big yellowfin tuna I've seen. There's a few really impressive yeah, fish. Big mackerel. Yeah, we had Cheers. a photo of, uh, of of Jessie on the on our month of mackerel. You sent us in some good photos for that. Yeah, I think we've got a story on yeah, that coming up some, later. Yeah, a few good run-ins with them. All right. Well, yeah. uh, well, okay. Could could you share us a story about maybe one of the first memorable fish that, that you shot? First memorable fish for me was a uh, spearing on a good mate of mine, Lee Baggett. We pretty much went spearing seven days in a row and we didn't spear a single fish. And we finally went to this, um, finally, finally went just off Cronulla there and uh, dove down and looked in this cave. I saw a blue, what I thought was a blue groper, which you can't shoot where we're from. Mm -hmm. Not like you guys. And no, uh, we love it. came back to the surface <laughs> and, and I just, something wasn't right. I remember just diving back down and just double check and looked in this cave and there's this big black drummer in there. And I uh, just sank the pranger straight into its face. Took me, about, <laughs> <laughs> took me about an hour to get the thing out of the cave. Just, you know, I was just too excited and yeah. pulled this thing out. It was about three and a half kilos. Oh, and wow. uh, we were just stoked. We had never, never seen a fish that big before. And, you know, after diving for literally like a week straight and not getting anything, it was so good to actually shoot something. Yeah, wow. uh, we walked down the Esplanade and jumped in off this place called Shark Island. And uh, this was before like we had a rig line or anything. I, I thought rig lines were only for deep divers at that <laughs> stage, so mm, yep. I just said, oh, well, I don't need that. And every time I shot a fish, I'd just swim back and just stashed in a rock pool. Mm, yep. So uh, we walked down to Shark Island, and uh, there wasn't many rock pools there. So I just dug a, <laughs> dug a big hole in the beach and just buried this drummer. <laughs> <laughs> and, we went back out, pretty murky, and you know we didn't really see much. And just as I was coming back in, I was in about two meters of water. There's this dirty big flathead just sitting on the ground, oh. and I just yeah sunk the pranger into its head. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, this is ridiculous. I I couldn't believe it. I was just so stoked, and we just couldn't believe our luck that we'd had. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, there's all these people just you know lounging around on Blackwoods Beach there, and they came up and they're just looking at this flathead. Yeah. And I think I spent the next two hours just digging holes like a dog trying to find the drummer. <laughs> <laughs> Did you but, find uh, it? Yeah, I finally found it. Uh, and uh, yeah, went home and took some pretty funny photos. I borrowed a wetsuit of this guy that I met, and it was like a, it's like a seven mil oh. uh, Neptune suit, and it had oh, these yeah. these knee pads that they were kind of like I don't know, big ribbed knee pads, and the, the foam ribbing was probably about two inches off the actual knee. It was hilarious. I'll can, have to, uh, can we get those photos? Yeah, that, I'll have to send you the photos. Yeah, that'll be good in the show notes. I've ever seen, but yeah, I'll never forget that day. That was definitely I could probably pinpoint that day to being like. The day I fully got addicted to spearing. Yeah. Alpha attacker with a big flatty <laughs> and a drummer yeah. over the shoulder, strolling past tourists. Yeah, <laughs> nice. I've been all about of about forty kilos, even with that wetsuit full of water. That's <laughs> hilarious. Oh, awesome. And what, what about you, Jesse? What was your first memorable fish? Um, my first memorable fish would have been uh, my first wahoo, which we shot over in Central America. Um, it was I sort of I learnt backwards because you know with Michael. He didn't do a lot of diving around Sydney. We went straight over to Central America and, um, you know, I think within the first year, couple of years of diving, I was out blue water hunting and uh, I was really, I remember being so nervous about blue water hunting, you know, it was this big three-letter word that was just horrifying, like not being able to see the bottom of the ocean and yeah. not, yeah. not knowing what to expect, you know, what can swim up to you. Yeah. And um, Michael had told me all these stories about the Coral Sea. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I remember I was, I was really scared and, 
um, we got out there and I just remember it was like it was better than any reef diving I've ever done. Like it was crystal clear and there were little wahoos swimming up to us Ooh, and wow. it was just um yeah, it was awesome intro to, to blue water hunting and then um it took me a few days to, to get used to the clear water and then finally um like I'd watched Michael and Brandon land, you know, so many wahoo, probably like six six or seven wahoo. And uh, finally, um, Brandon went home the day before I shot mine. So it was just Michael and I in the water, and he was trying to get me a wahoo, and um, he was he was trying to film me shooting it. Yeah. And uh, this wahoo came in, and you know I took I lined up and missed this wahoo again, and oh, you know I was just you get that monkey on your back, and you're getting so stressed yeah, and anxious, yeah, yeah. you know oh, I've got yeah. to get this fish, you know everyone else has shot one, what's like why can't I get one? And then finally uh, I shot I shot this wahoo, and Michael we both swam up to the surface, and Michael stopped filming, and he was looking at the camera trying to, you know, fix the setting or something, and um, before he knew it, I loaded the gun and and dived down straight on top of this wahoo. And, shot shot down from above it and uh it was off and i came to the surface screaming and he's like what what you what have what happened like how'd you load you come that quick i'm like got a wire you know <laughs> finally got one and uh he was like just be really careful because you know i didn't see the shot it might rip out being a wahoo is so soft and uh, i just i played it up for ages you know and um you know real gumby styles like it's just <laughs> pulling it right to the surface and it's running again pulling all my float line out of my hands and uh yeah i finally landed it after about 10 minutes but yeah it was just such a good feeling to finally land one after watching you know three or four people land them cool. continuously cool. day after day yeah so you could I still haven't shot one, Turbo. You shot one yet? No, no. Nah. Got one yet. This no. weekend, actually. Is this the some... second girl we've interviewed that's shot better fish than we have? Yeah. 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 All right. Too so cool. we've, got to, we've got to actually stop podcasting and go spearfishing. But so. we just love our flathead and drama too much. So <laughs> yeah. them. It's hard to get away <laughs> from them. Nothing wrong with flathead and drama. So hunting techniques. Um, Michael, what's your favourite hunting technique and how do you apply it? Just uh, getting to the bottom. I think is it's something that took me a long time to to figure out. I think especially when you're uh, you, you know you, you, when you're chasing reef fish, particularly, definitely just getting straight to the bottom is I, th- I think is key to actually having them come in on you. Yeah. I, I remember for a long time for me um, that feeling of sinking always made me like, nervous. You know, and it wasn't comfortable sinking. You know, it just felt like I don't know. It just it would just wreck my breath hold every time I was just sinking down and i'd have this tendency to just try to hover just off the bottom thinking oh you know it's too deep i'm just hovering i'll just hover off the bottom and in the end you end up spending more energy just trying to keep yourself just off the bottom and yeah yeah. and the fish just don't actually come in on you so i think now if i know there's reef fish around or i can see the reef fish that i want instead of just hovering two or three meters above the bottom you know i'll just tuck my head in streamline myself as much as possible and just go down that extra you know one or two meters which really in you know in theory it only takes you like half a second or a second just to get down there once you're you know at your hunting depth yeah and then just just be on the bottom and you'll be amazed how much fish actually come in on you when when you're there instead of just like kicking awkwardly just hovering off the bottom scanning kind of thing now i can relate to that like um if you're weighted properly when you get past 10 meters you're pretty much sinking and then yeah. I've, I've had that same experience. And uh, one of the one of my first mentors, John Regan, up on the Sunshine Coast, like we were trying to hunt black spot, and he said, "You've just got to get on the bottom." And uh, yep. and I mean, it was that simple. And you just lie still, and uh, and and the, it's amazing how much fish do come up to you. And same thing with looking up on your way down. They, if you don't look up, they seem to be there as soon as you get there. So, yeah, no, that's cool. All right. Jesse, what's your favourite hunting technique and how do you apply it? <laughs> um, you, yeah, I wasn't expecting that one. Um, I don't know, probably off the top of my head, like I struggle with that, what Michael said usually because we're diving deeper water than I can dive for Michael. <laughs> but, um, yeah, probably, I don't know, techniques probably get closer. Um, it's been a really hard one for me in Samoa in the clear water. Um, it's just, yeah, it's, it can be really tricky to get those fish to come in on you um when you're not when you don't have like a two minute breath hold so um yeah i just yeah get closer in the clear water um yeah cool yeah, that's it advice. sorry get, no no get close is good i just right. i just like to say um at this point in the show to the listeners you, you might hear like the tinkle of ice 
and the crunching of ice, and you can probably guess that's rum. And for once, it's not us. It's actually, it's actually on the other end of the line. Oh, that's right? great! I'm, I'm enjoying it. It's refreshing. So so stealthy with that. <laughs> oh, you're a very stealthy tacker. Just wetting the lips. Uh, that's nothing. <laughs> So, um, in between sips on rum, what's the um, scariest moment, Jesse, you've had out um, spearfishing, and, and what did you take away from it? I think probably what for me stands out as the scariest moment was um, this drift we did in Samoa, and, and I, I only think it's scary because of people's reactions when we show them the video, and um, we we went out to this place that no one had dived before, I don't think, had they? No, we were, so, no. We were some of the first people to dive this spot, and uh, it, it came up to about... 20 meters out of 100 meters and um we got out there and you know we, we didn't have a sound or anything we jumped in and we came up on this ledge and there were just fish everywhere rainbow runners um bait sharks mackerel dog tooth tuna wow. massive massive sailfish swam up to michael in the first two minutes wow and uh, we di- I dived down and michael kept I, I kept missing these mackerel because of the water it was just so clear and uh, I went down and Michael said, just wait until you can see the detail. I'm like, okay. So I put a few kicks in and closed the distance between us. And I remember looking over the mackerel shoulder and seeing two sharks. And I thought, that's all right. You know, there's sharks everywhere here. Just take the shot. And I looked back and I'm like, just do it. Took the shot. The mackerel took off. And then about five sharks swam after it. And I thought, oh, yep, this isn't going to last very long. <laughs> Got to the surface. And then Michael swam straight down to poke the sharks off. And um, I was pulling it up. It's about six meters, and then what you dive down and yeah, I went I went down to poke the sh- initially poke the sharks off Jesse's fish, and uh, there were just sharks all over it. And I was like, oh, just getting in between them, trying to poke them off. And then just two doggies came in, and <laughs> <laughs> I started. To- <laughs> I pretty much forgot about Jesse's. Face. <laughs> <laughs> just, just plug this doggy, just hoping. Just I thought, oh, you know, I'll take my time, try to stone it. The sharks everywhere. Shot the doggy. Didn't stun it at all. Just went ballistic. Um, <laughs> it, it worked though, because all the sharks left Jesse's fish. Yeah, yeah it was great. Chase Stop the chasing my one. Yeah, yeah. I I horsed my mackerel up really quickly and um, quickly stabbed it and lifted it up out of the water because there were sharks, you know, already at my feet at this stage. And I looked over at Michael. And Michael's got this dog tooth about two metres under him and it just spews yeah. all the chum that we've just dropped uh, all oh, through the water oh, and the, yeah. the sharks just have gone nuts for all this chum, like oh. couldn't have stirred the pot any worse. And then he looks over to me and I've got the fish above my head, so he tries to do the same thing. And like, It was that stage, I remember pulling the fish up and there was that many sharks on it that I was just thinking, should I just leave this down there? So yeah. the feeding frenzy happens, you know, a few metres below me at least and... I just said, oh, and I just pulled it up, and then it threw up all its food, and then it was even worse. <laughs> and anyway, I got it up, and it was just splashing everywhere, real line everywhere, and I, I looked over at Jessie, because there's sharks there all over her as well, and she's got this mackerel above her head, treading water, and I've got this dog tooth that I couldn't stab because there was too many sharks, and I just had that above my head as well, and real wow. line everywhere. And then we looked out for the boat, and it was raining, and I couldn't even see the boat. It was about two k's away <laughs> down current, oh, no. because... We initially told them, be careful for the float lines, don't don't get too close to us. And I think they took that as just stay right away from it. Uh, <laughs> and yeah. so we're, we're screaming and yelling and, like, they've come up to us and, like, oh, many Malia, and they're laughing and, like, finally get the fish in the boat <laughs> and uh, got in and I'm like, oh, and I've bit the fish bit my fingertip off as well and he's like oh you'll be right and i like rip my glove off there's blood everywhere like, oh. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> so yeah so this was uh i think this was the first or second time we we ever convinced these guys to take us out and, <laughs> and we're on this bank in you know offshore samoa torrential rain they're out of sight we both got fish above our heads and Jesse's thumbs missing, you know, <laughs> like it was just, it was good fun. Just a romantic yeah. dive. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> that's yeah. epic. That <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, Out of the whole experience, what did you kind of learn? What will you do differently next time? <laughs> <laughs> don't take Jesse with me. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I don't know. Um, what would I do differently? I'd... I'd have a medical kit on board. We, yeah. we, we're we had a, a bit, medical kit. We're a bit stupid diving. sometimes, but yeah. Yeah, well, we all learn the same, don't we? I mean, and that's how, that's how you learn. You do stuff wrong, and then hopefully you don't yeah. die, and the next time you do it different. <laughs> exactly, yeah, and then it never happens again once you're prepared. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true too. Murphy's Law, isn't it? Um, yeah. So, so maybe um, just from from what I got out of it, I'll, you'd probably maybe educate the boaties a bit more, especially if they haven't been around yeah. Spiros. And... Yeah, it's definitely definitely try harder than what we did, I guess. Um, yeah, but you want to go diving sometimes and... Um, so you just sort of you, you just think yeah. they're going to know, but they don't. Yeah, yeah. Well, we've had a lot of lot of. I guess you take a bit of risk, you know, when you go to these countries and you you just go around trying to find somebody to take you out. You know, the, mm. you know they've never really even seen spearos or even. Yeah. You know, when we when we initially jumped in on the spot the first time we went out with them, he's like, you, you can't dive here. I said, why not? He says, it's open ocean. Mm. <laughs> like he was just shocked. Yeah, that's right. Oh. No, just give us just give us half an hour to stay close and they only dive in the reef so it was yeah, yeah, yeah totally new yeah, but like shocked. remember that time um we were we were drifting that thing for doggies and um i just looked over to check on the boat and uh and the current's flogging like you can't if you get if you don't have a boat you're just gonna drift in the middle of nowhere and i looked up and i remember thinking oh we should probably start swimming for the shore now and uh this boat <laughs> he had the captain had his 10-year-old son up the front of his 30-foot um, steel boat pushing him off the cliff with a 9-metre bamboo stick because wow. he couldn't get the engine started. <laughs> and we're in about three feet of swell. And this guy's just got his little kid up the front holding the boat off the cliff. And I was like, this, this spend, is, you know, the boat off the ocean <laughs> we're screwed. Wow. But, uh, you know, we were watching, we were both nervously sitting there with their heads out of the water watching this guy. And he finally got the motor to kick over. And, yeah, Joe hooned out of there and right close to us. And like, was that like that a, cor- a coral cay or something? Is that what you mean? No, it was just like this <laughs> volcanic island, just sheer cliffs that came up. And wow. we were just drifting around the outside and. Wow. And uh, there was a bombie coming up. And Crazy. Luckily, and there's no we, reef we where looked, he was. So. We looked up to see where the boat was. He's there right up against a cliff, and his son's just fending it off with this bamboo pole. <laughs> <laughs> and I said to Michael, I think we should start kicking in for the island now, just in case. <laughs> we'll grab under the rock, and someone can rescue us later. <laughs> Righto, guys. Veterans Vault. So, um, po- Pirate Pete. Pirate Pete, take it away. Pirate Pete, get on you, buddy. Oh! It's time to open the Veterans Vault. Thanks, Barnacle Bob. Today's Veterans Vault is proudly brought to you in partnership with Adreno Spearfishing Supplies. Yeah, Adreno have put together a special for new Spiro podcast Ooh. listeners. You can save $20 on all purchases over $200. Bargain. Just use the code NoobSpiro at checkout. You can use that online or in store. That's right. And they've got a $15 flat rate shipping Australia-wide and a 90-day hassle-free returns policy. Just tell them Tight Ass Turbo sent you and they'll sort you out. Righto. Back to the show, buddy. Uh, so this is the part of the show where we ask our special guests or guests to take us deep into an area of spearfishing expertise that they'd like to share about. So we call it the Veterans Vault. Um, so Jesse and Tacker are going to talk to us a bit today about... Um, video and, and filming uh, production, getting your production quality up, and a couple they're going to give us some tips, I think, on how to make your spearfishing films better. Yep, um, sure. So it, it it applies to video or photos. So um, mainly with the the first major tip that I think you could get is um, to always have your back to the sun, um, okay. unless you are going to go for a silhouette shot or something. Um, you get better colours when you have the the sun behind you so that's probably the first one um the second get closer to whatever you're taking photos of obviously this depends on the camera that you have but um but don't rely on your lens uh just get closer like a lot of people take photos three meters away and they crop the photo later yeah but they just lose so much color and they get there's a lot more dirt in the water between you and your subject so it just comes out a bit blurrier so if you can if you if you're going to invest in a good piece of equipment I'd recommend getting a wide-angle lens. Okay. So it just cuts down that, that dirty water between you and, and uh, the fish or the person that you're taking a photo of. So, yeah, yeah, if it doesn't matter what sort of camera you get, like beginners or professional, just get a wide-angle. It's, it's probably the best best thing you can get, I think, in investing in a piece of equipment. Cool. Um, like everything looks clearer once you put a wide-angle lens on your camera. Is, it, is anything else in lenses that you should look for? Like, uh, like, like uh, f-stop and all that kind of stuff. Is there anything? Yeah, yeah. So the faster, the faster lens you have, the better it's going to perform in, uh, in like in low light conditions. So pretty much everything underwater is, uh, you know, considered low light. 
So yep. yeah, I, w- I would look for a fast lens. So so that's a um, higher. It's a stop? smaller, smaller, smaller number. Smaller number. <laughs> Just to confuse you. So, so like a the 1. smaller 6. the number, the bigger the aperture. So yeah, like f um, one point eight or something. So super the, fast. So. Have you- so if you have a bigger aperture, it pulls more light in, is that right? Yeah, that's right. So bigger aperture, um, more light, but smaller number, just to confuse you. I think I've got that right. Yeah, yeah that's ah, right. Cool, sweet. Yes. Is there, is there, any, <laughs> um, is there any particular lens out there that you'd recommend? If you've got a Canon, if you have a Canon camera, I'd recommend the 16 to 35 mil um, lens, but it is, it is a bit expensive. It just depends on how much money you want to invest. So, yeah, that's what I use, Canon 16 to 35 mil. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So you got a, a an SLR with a big housing? Yeah, yeah. Uh big Canon five D Mark III with a naughty cam housing. Okay, cool. So. And what's what would that sort of set someone back? If they if they <laughs> is that a rig you'd recommend to someone that wanted to upgrade from, you know, an entry level setup? Um, it's a pretty big step, yeah, I yeah. think. Um yeah. <laughs> I probably wouldn't have gone that except I was already buying a five D Mark III for work, so it seems um crazy to go back and buy a second camera and put a housing on it. Yep. But yeah, like it's it's probably the top top level of uh, like top consumer level camera you would buy. Um, like you can it, it's sort of getting into the professional side of things, so yeah. Cool. Probably. What were those other cameras that we were looking at? The next? Oh yeah, the Sony Nex series as well. That's just yeah. a bit of a well, I've, smaller. I've, I've, I think Daniel Mann uses those um, for spearfishing down under. I think he shoots a lot with those. They look absolutely incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah they they're good. They do film some really good I, footage as well. So yeah. I know that's what DJ uses as his backup camera. DJ Strunts. Um, he's a he. He used to shoot for Surfing Magazine and that. So. Um, wow. Think so they're a lot smaller as well than, the, than Jesse's setup. So it's a lot. More yeah. comfortable for spearfishing. I remember when I first started, I had like the old uh, DV tape camera and this um, <laughs> current, this Equinox and housing, which was just off. like, you know, carrying around a small rubbish bin with a lid on it. <laughs> <laughs> and this was back when I used to film with a gun in one hand and this yeah. beast in the other. And like, you know, I actually got used to it. So when GoPros and that came out, I was just so stoked to say, yeah. hands free. You know, people these days go, oh, GoPro is such a pain in the ass in your head and this and that and like, far out. It's so easy. You don't even know yeah. it's there. Like if I go out with a, without the GoPro now, I I'm always like pinching the top of my head as if I was going to turn it on and it's not even there. Like at the end of the day, the best camera you have is the one that's on you. If you don't have a camera on you, then you're not going to get the photo. Yeah. Like um, if you get a big one and you never use it, like what's the point? Uh, there was a guy that we we, we uh, went halves in a, a trip with him in Mexico to film the sailfish yeah. and he filmed for Nat Geo and uh, he went out and we were, you know, we were just with our tiny little point and shoot camera swimming around with our big fins on taking all these photos and uh he he was in there with a you know red scarlet camera in a fifty thousand dollar gates housing and uh he he couldn't get close to them because you know he it was like moving with a massive garbage lid in the water you know trying to swim with this thing two feet wide and uh like he, he got about three good shots i think out of the whole day because he just couldn't get couldn't get to the fish close like quick enough yeah yeah just back yeah. to that pinching the top of your head when the camera's not there, Taka. Like, um, I lent my friend Turbo my um, GoPro one day, <laughs> and uh, he was out at the Wave Rider Boy, probably in, you know, 60, so 80 This story's already got a hole in it, because your GoPro's <coughs> sitting on the in, on the cupboard over there. Oh, uh, was it just my head strap you lost? It's just your head strap, which I replaced oh, okay. with an aftermarket fake GoPro $10 head strap. One. Yeah, okay. Oh, it wasn't that bad then. <laughs> No worries. So it's an age. I just had to shut that down because it just, uh, it just comes up all the time. But my camera is broken though, isn't it? Yeah, and I don't and know. I've never used it. No, well, I hang on. He, he's a no. guy that buys a GoPro on eBay, right? He, he, he got the lowest quality <laughs> model. He got it about $20 cheaper than what it is actually at full price. And it had a broken housing. Bargain. <laughs> Absolute bargain. Couldn't well, leave it. Couldn't leave it up say, there. I'm just a good chopper. Just a smart chopper. <laughs> <laughs> you should listen to one of our fast life facts then. <laughs> oh, mate, he's, he's a crafty consumer oh, anyway. Cool. All right, well, some more tips, Jesse? Um, yeah, probably just quickly um, for spend the time to get your shot in focus. Um, if you're using a, like a professional camera other than a GoPro, um, figure out, learn the focus settings on your camera and, and get it right because that's usually the one thing that you cannot fix. Um, on the computer after um once it's if it's blurry that's it it's you know you might as well throw that footage out 
Um, another one would be slow and steady. So a lot of people, especially when they have the GoPro in the head, they just sort of flick around and, and don't um, like let the camera settle and get the shot. So if you're filming a fish, count like one, two, three, four, five, yep. and just get that shot because when you get back into the edit suite and start looking at footage, you're like, oh, I can't use that. You know, I've, I've moved and then there's a the fish and then I've looked away again. Like things in your head happen so much quicker than you realize, yep. um, especially when you're spearing and you've only got, you know, a minute or minute and a half breath hold. Mm. Um, so, yeah, just, just go slow and... and yeah, and get your shot right. It's amazing how then, the footage just kicks around so quickly. Yeah. I oh, believe, yeah. Like, I remember mean, well, the first time I took it out, I thought, yeah, I'm moving like <laughs> a slug here. But then you go, yep. like you said, into the, the edit um, studio or whatever, and it's just like kicking around and you've got yeah. nothing yeah. except for like blurred, sharp Looks footage. It's like you're like, getting yeah. attacked by a shark. You know? Yeah, and you're yeah. like, look, there's the mullet in the top yeah, tiny it's corner. Yeah. Like, it's and you so think of... slow and I sat there and I filmed yeah. and it <laughs> came in front of me and I thought, yeah, which one? And I, you know, lined him up and yeah, oh, shot right. him and then, yeah. And then, and then you watch it, it's just like... Yeah. Oh, fuck. And, and, no, and why can't I get me snapper to come in? <laughs> it's just moving around and rolls it out. Like Jesse said, they like... That most people are diving for a minute or a minute and a half. Like, <laughs> Here you know, we go. You're competing with half that. You know? <laughs> so, you know. 30 are the best, mate. Um, and I just think you were going to mention When you're it. filming turbo, then just make sure half your dive, you're just slow and just getting one shot and then the other half just coming back up. <laughs> nice, <laughs> yeah, nice. that's good advice, actually. Five seconds one shot filming, per dive. five seconds. Like, that's where his sliding. nickname comes from, turbo. <laughs> <laughs> turbo down, turbo up. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, um, well, yeah, I guess got? I guess since I've pretty much converted to GoPro, it's just because it's just so easy. I just love not having to use my hands and just having it on my head the whole time. Um, yeah, it's I've seen a lot of guys that get the GoPro and they they don't put it into that one button mode. I highly recommend using that just for saving battery and saving the memory on your computer. Okay. Um, yep. Some guys who we met some guys that have actually just. They turn the GoPro on at the start of the day and they just leave it running all day. And then at the end of the day, <laughs> after they replace the battery and the memory cards, they just edit this, you know, I think the GoPro films like a, <laughs> I think it's like a 20 or 30 minute clip. And they, they sift through that trying to find the footage and uh, you, know, you don't have enough, enough scroll bar to even find where you've shot it. In. That sounds fun. No, no, that, it, it, this is funny. <laughs> this is exactly what I tried to do. I thought... Look, if I get it all, I've got it all. Like it's all on there, and you do. But then you got two weeks of sifting crap. It yeah. sounds like yeah. yeah. And your computer just runs out of memory, and it's just so hard. You have, you either have to like re-edit the clip and like export it again, and it's just a headache. Especially when you're just diving all day, taking you know hundreds and hundreds of clips. So, what I like to do is I like to set it to that one button mode, and just before I dive, I just push it once. That's the pinching of the head thing I was talking about. Yeah. So you Push film it once, every dive. Listen to it beep, and then once it's ready, I just dive. Yep. And then as I come back up, just hold it and turn it back off. And uh, the other thing that I learned um, from my from my mate, the Low Bros, they actually had a really good system. They um they before they turn the camera off again, they either give a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Mm -hmm. So or if halfway. it's or like a ah. yeah little you know so so kind of symbol. Yep. So if if it's a you know, a rubbish clip and you don't want it, you just give it a thumbs down and turn the camera off. So when it comes to you sorting your footage out on the computer, you just skip to the end of each clip and go, yeah. thumbs down, delete, thumbs down, delete, thumbs Let's up, go. keep it, you know. And then that way, mm. it just that saves you hours so and hours of easier. just sifting through footage. Let's go. And how do you get the, how do you, is it, have you got any tricks for getting the angle of the GoPro on the head right? Um, <laughs> I'm, I pretty much try to get it the same the same angle as the mask so the same kind of on the same kind of pain as the mask so i just i basically just usually ask someone that i'm diving with like how's the camera look and they look from the side and, they, and if it's pointing forward you know i wedge my finger behind there and i get I, I pretty much know now just from the feel of my finger in between the gopro and the head strap where where is right but yeah if if I you, just palm yeah, my otherwise palm you my just mask. put your palm on your on your mask and, and then try yeah. to keep it flat with the GoPro. I find that that works yeah. pretty good. Yeah, I think it's probably a better thing for Shrek too with those um like pork sausage fingers of his, like <laughs> the, the actual thing that he's pointing at the sky. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky I don't have a GoPro, I guess. Pork sausage. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, I do, but it's got a broken housing. Don't and know it's, how a, that it's like a GoPro 1.2, isn't it? Yeah, mm. it's pretty old. Black and white. Well, I have one of those. It, it, I can't kill it. I've lost it in waterfalls, and Michael's gone back and recovered it three weeks later. I just can't. I've still got the thing. I just don't wear it because it falls off my head now. There's so much drag on it. Just it's like it swimming around with a Rubik's Cube on your head. <laughs> oh, that's good. Cool. All right, any, any parting tips with um, filming production? Oh, just practice it. The more time in the water, the better you're going to get. So, yeah. Oh, I want to like ask anything. something. What is like a, a great basic setting? Like, like setting? Yeah, like or settings just on a, di- on a digital SLR. Like if you're going for a dive, like is it on full auto? Like how, how does that work? Uh, I'm just, yeah, aperture priority, which is usually AV, I think, on most cameras. Yep. And yeah, you just start, I just flick it on that most of the time unless we're taking fish picks and sometimes I'll put it on full manual um, because usually for some reason we always... Sh- we always shoot fish late in the afternoon, so it gets pretty dark pretty quickly. So um, it doesn't. The auto settings don't really work that well um, when it's when it's dark. Like it tends to slow down too much. You get blurry images. Right. But yeah, rest of the time um, I'd go aperture priority. But yeah, just just get to know your camera. Every camera is different, and I think that's uh, you know a lot of people go out and buy the best camera and then they just chuck it on auto and it's like yep. what's the point if you don't learn how to use the camera properly you're not getting everything out of it mm, yep. so yeah just practice okay what is the funniest thing you've experienced out spearfishing i was diving in a top secret location with a <laughs> mate of mine bryson bryson <laughs> Sheehy, yep. and uh <laughs> we come across this mega school of jewfish that jess claims to have found <laughs> and, uh, anyway we were down there and we were trying to get some footage of bryson shooting one and um dives down there's jewfish everywhere and he's just trying to find a big one trying to find a big one and then over his shoulder this massive wobby gong just comes out of nowhere and i didn't know what to do i i i, I think i meant to signal him but i kind of like <laughs> also just wanted to keep quiet and see what would happen yeah and uh it brushed over his shoulder, and Bryson turned his face, and he pretty much shoved his face in the wobby's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and it's probably we we're probably in about twelve meters of water, and I think I just let out all my air laughing, <laughs> and he did as well. Like he just comes up, and we came to the surface, and I don't think I could breathe properly for about five minutes. It's all on, uh, it's all on uh, YouTube. I'll, I'll give you guys a link so you can That'd share it with everyone. But um, yeah, that was definitely. You can hear him say something on the water too, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you listen carefully, he's, he, the water muffles the swears out pretty nicely. But, um, oh, yeah, nice. it's a yeah, funny nice. clip to watch. I think he'd just been buzzed by a white the, a few months before that too, oh. so he's a bit touchy about sharks. Uh, <laughs> he, he couldn't have, yeah, he literally put his face in its mouth. Bryson and the white wobby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What about funny. you, Jesse? Any funny stories? Maybe... Um, yeah, honestly, we oh, I, I think I spend more time laughing in the water than actually spearing. Um, we were trying to pick one, but uh, probably the funniest was, um, I feel really bad for saying this because he had to buy a new GoPro, but uh, our mate, uh, should I mention his name? Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> um, our mate Ollie, uh, we, he came over in Medicine Central America to go chase some tuna. And uh, where where was he when he's, he lost the no, first we in, GoPro? I don't know where it was. I think it was in Panama where he, the first GoPro flooded. He mm. did. He chucked a uh, chucked a turbo. I think it was a <laughs> turbo, or I don't even know who's who anymore. I didn't know who was who to begin with, but um, <laughs> he, he did the he did the uh, second hand GoPro deal thing yeah. as well. And the housing, oh, that's the right. housing was yeah. also faulty. That's a shrink. Uh, yeah, that's a shrink. And yeah. He uh he he jumped in and the first the first dive of the trip he came up and I think Michael saw it. He's like, Ollie, you know you you go for it, you you're housing, it's open, it's flooded. <laughs> and he's like, What? No, no, it's not and and he's like, Yeah, it is and I think I came over and I'm like, Yeah, Ollie, it's flooded, like you get out. So he's jumped out and he's tried to fix it and anyway the GoPro was dodgy and he uh he's like, Oh, I mustn't have clipped it up properly so we just put it down to that and he got a new gopro but kept the same housing <laughs> <laughs> anyway we, we had no idea it was a housing at this stage and uh we've gone out on this tuna trip for three days and michael said oh 
I'm going to tell... I'm going to tell Ollie that his housing's flooded on the first dive. And I'm like, oh, you're such an asshole. He's like, no, no, no. I'm going to tell him. It'll be so funny and I'll film it. I'm like, okay, cool. Anyway, Ollie, Ollie dives down and he comes up next to me. And uh, I look at his housing and I'm like, Ollie, there's water in your housing. Your GoPro's flooded again. What the hell? And he's like, what? I was just saying that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he was so angry. He came like powering over and gave me this death stare, and I'm like, "No, seriously, look at his, look at his housing." I always thought I was pulling his leg as well, and uh, like he finally got out of the water and realized that. Oh man, I felt so sorry for him. I couldn't believe the luck. <laughs> One, it was just, oh, yeah. Our really audience funny. is going to get one powerful message out of this show. Yeah. Don't do the second hand GoPro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, is, what it was, oh. the, the pressure when he dove down, the pressure compressed the O ring enough to make the clip at the top loose. So as he dove down, that flicked the latch over. And then as he came up and the pressure expanded, it just blew the housing over. <laughs> oh, oh. So, yeah, That's... that was something to watch for, but that was. <laughs> Still better yeah, than Shrek. Good. So Shrek, when we when he got it and he showed me, it's actually got silicon <laughs> smeared on the inside Just of the like housing. It. Uh, oh, it was a pretty good camera. Uh, it was pretty good. Uh, yeah, that's an, that's another tip for cameras. Always like maintain your gear, check have your check your O-rings and stuff, and be prepared. I went out yesterday and uh, I did my whole process of putting the camera in the housing wrong and. I got out there and went to turn the camera on. I didn't have a battery or, or a memory card in it. Oh, no. So, you know, rookie error, but, yeah, these things happen. <laughs> All right, fast five facts for noobs with the Rife-sponsored divers. Thank you, Pedro. Take it away, Pedro. It's time for Noob Spiro's fast five facts. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So if, you got, if you guys were starting out spearfishing all over again, what five pieces of advice would have helped you out the most? Um, I think just for safety-wise, um, I would definitely say diving with a buddy. I mean, obviously, um, everyone says that, but um, not just for the safety side of things, but you can also, you learn so much from other people. If you're diving with somebody who's been doing it longer than you, then you can you can learn so much, whether they're new or, or, um, or you know, veterans. Um, you can pick up things off them. So if they're new and, you know, they're scaring all the fish away, you, you can learn, like, what are they doing that's scaring the fish away? Yeah. Um, or, or what are they doing that's bringing the fish in? So, like, yeah, dive with a buddy. Um, just recently, it's probably is my scariest moment, um, was when I shot a mackerel and uh, the float line ripped my fin off and um, I came up and, you know, I was already pushing it, but I knew Michael was there. And uh, when I, I got up and I, I didn't realise how far I was from the surface, I remember looking up and then my legs started cramping up, the one which had the, a fin on it. So, you know, I was like bucking my way to the surface and uh, I got up and Michael just grabbed me straight away and I uh, had like a really small samba. Yeah. And, oh, wow. um, yeah, like that that was to me a real eye-opener was that, um, you know, just to – you think you're fine and that was a shallow dive like um, – but things go wrong and I didn't yeah. have anything in reserve for – something to go wrong yeah, yeah but luckily michael was there so i was fine but yeah no that's a good story awesome mm. and, uh, all right fast five fact number two uh number two probably piggyback off the first one would be uh do a free diving course um okay. took me what 11 <clears throat> years to actually do a course and that's been one of my biggest regrets that i didn't do the course at the start because i had to unlearn all the bad habits that i'd learned you know, on my own. Yeah. So I think if, you know, if, if you're starting out, not only is it great for just the safety aspect, but just, just doing it right in the first place and, you know, all those years of time and practice in the water can be done with the right techniques and I think you'd learn and improve a lot better if you knew the right way to do it. So cool. um, That's a good yeah, one. Definitely. Who did you do your um, stage A with? Uh, I actually did my... Uh, free diving course with this guy called Martin Stepeniak. Okay. Um, did that over in Hawaii. Yeah, um, wow. yeah, really good course. Uh, really you good guy as well. Course. I did my instructors as well with him. Oh wow! But, um, yeah, there's, there's, um, yeah, yeah, any course, any course will will teach you. You know, any reputable course will will teach you what you need to know, and I highly recommend it for sure. Um, number three, uh, invest in good gear. 
and and the correct gear. So um, I think like if you're going to go out and buy a new pair of fins, spend the money and get the right gear. Or if you're going to go out and buy a GoPro, buy a new one. Don't buy yeah. a second-hand one. <laughs> um, but all. yeah, like uh, <laughs> if you like if you're going to chase a fish, get the right gear for the job. Like I think it comes down to having a certain respect for the fish that you're going to take, but. Um, that you know you're going to use the right gear for the job, and you're not just going to go out there and oh, sh- with the you know she'll be right, because you you go if you're going to go chase doggies, have the right setup, like mm. respect to fish and, and increase your chance of getting that fish. You hear stories of people going out and and using you know a little um, little gun to to shoot doggies, and then it just rips out, and uh, you know like they could have landed those fish if they had the right gun or the right gear, so. Number four, uh, what have we got here? Um, join a club. No. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Just, just made the order. Come on, Pat. Don't join, join a club, club apparently. <laughs> um, yeah, that, I think joining a club, uh, when I first started, like I said, you know, I, I, I was just in the river with my mate, had no idea of the rules, had no idea, you know, of anything really. We just went out there and just winging it, and it was all good fun, but, you know, the more and more you become passionate about spearfishing or anything really you just the, the rabbit hole just gets deeper and deeper and you just realize there's a whole new world out there and um yeah once i joined a club it was just and, and you learn so much more in a club than you would on your own you know like you hear you hear it all the time you know you learn 10 years of knowledge within you know a couple of years in the club and i completely back that theory because you just surrounded by so much experience and you're going out with these guys and you're learning all these tiny little tips and tricks and it's or you or you can just find a boyfriend who spears and just learn everything off them really quickly yeah so that's it if, go out there and get a boyfriend who spears if you're a guy it doesn't matter make the sacrifice just look at, uh, look at shrek and turbo there we'll yeah that worked out, out really well we together. found each other yeah. <laughs> uh, right, number five number five uh definitely i think save of the moment would be my last parting tip um you, you see especially in this day and age there's a lot of people that uh you know this with social media and all these trips and stuff that are available uh, people just see all the time yellowfin tuna you know massive marlin this and that like all these amazing fish that have taken years and years to to get and people i think a lot of people just try to shortcut their spearfishing career and think that they're not a good spearer until they shoot these kind of fish. Yeah. And I think I think people they miss out on like all the good stuff like that, mm. you know, three kilo drummer and and that you know their, their first moey and all this stuff like you, you only get that you only get a fish first fish once you know and and to take that kind of stokeness away because you're thinking oh well it's not this it's not that yeah. it's just I think you should really just enjoy the journey and not rush it and trying to be the best and get get the deepest and do this and do that just enjoy right. it as it comes and and you'll love it you know for years yeah. we we got out on sunday so we we hopped in my car it's a uh 19 oh no it's 2000 hyundai gets two door yeah and, it's uh, the choice of champions paid it's four drive right <laughs> <laughs> paid 160 dollars to catch the ferry over and went for a shore dive we shot two fish in about four hours, but man, yep. we just had a really good time, and uh, I agree, completely agree with what you say. It's awesome, uh, Tacker. So, yeah, that's that's what it's all about for sure. Uh, no, that's cool. All right, so there's your fast five facts. What have we got, Turbo? Uh, all right, I'm still scribbling those down. Right, dive with a buddy it could save your life. That's a great one. It's popped up again. Number two, do a free diving course, so and that'll fast track your skills, and uh, it'll it'll if you do it early, you won't uh, pick up all those bad habits that we've got. Um, Spend the money on the right gear, buy quality, buy it once, and uh, that's buy all. Buy rife. About, buy rife, <laughs> and uh, and that's all about respecting the fish, you know, so that you're going to land that that fish. Um, join a club for some reason with a big pause, and then just like like going off there, trailing off for a bit, and then uh, and then finally, <laughs> so, so, I'd say that's the rum, and uh, and finally savor the moment like an ice cold Bundy rum. <laughs> cool. Now it's good to have two regular yeah. listeners on the show. They they know the fast five fact format. So so Jesse, I'm going to ask you this question because I know what Tack is going to say. Crucial tip for noobs: What piece of equipment is essential? What brands do you recommend and why? <laughs> um, I for any lady listeners out there, I would definitely say the the best piece of equipment you can get is a gun that you can load. 
it doesn't matter if it's little or big, just if you can't load it, you're wasting your time as far as I'm concerned. Um, I started out, I bought a rail gun and uh, I couldn't load it. And, uh, you know, it was just such a pain in the ass swimming up to Michael every 10 minutes. Can you load my gun, please? And he just got the shit. So, Don't worry um, about it. <laughs> Finally, uh, when we went to Central America, um, we just got Michael got sponsored by Rife, and we went by the Rife factory. And um, Julie's Julie Rife is great; like she's been spearing for years. And uh, you know, I talked to her about guns and and what what sort of setup she used, and she could she had a setup for everything, like from a little reef gun to a big blue water cannon. And uh, yeah, like just uh, it was probably the the <laughs> most important part of uh, my spearing career, I reckon, was being able to load a, a big gun. So uh, I think after that I got a Euro 130 and I have no problems loading that now. And, wow. um, yeah, and, like, big blue water cannons. But, yeah, I'd, I'd never heard about a rest tab or, like, lengthening rubbers, adding an extra rubber. So, yeah, like, there's a whole lot of different techniques you can use. Cool. Um, but, yeah, that's the number one complaint from females. Maybe is, yeah. a roller gun? That, would that be easier? I don't know if Rife has any of those in their catalogue, but... Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they, uh, I've tried loading a roller, and uh, it was pretty hard, but, yeah, that, okay. I mean, yeah. that was only one gun, but, Oh, cool. Yeah. All right, so what sort of load assists have you got on these guns for females or for people that are um, maybe not as strong or shorter arms like turbo? <laughs> um, I use a rest tab on all my spears, um, so they put them on the, on the spears for me in the factory. And, uh, yeah, I think there's a few other companies that put the rest tab on the actual barrel of the gun. Yep, yep. Um, but, yeah, that's, uh, that's my main one. But I also use uh, generally, like, the next size down rubbers and just chuck an extra one on. Cool. So on my 130, I've got um, three 14 mil rubbers. Yep. And uh, it's, it's an extra rubber and it takes a bit longer, but I don't care. I can load my own gun, so... It's okay. quicker than swimming over to Michael going, can you load my gun for me, please? Right, so that was a pretty good crucial kit for Noob. Did you have anything to add to that, Tacker? Um, I think yeah. for me the best advice for someone starting out is a good wetsuit. Um, you can't, I can't say how many times I had to get out of the water when I was starting out because I was just freezing. And, uh, you know, I had plenty more energy to keep going but just couldn't put up with the cold. So I think if you invest in a good wetsuit to start with, uh, what should you yeah, look it'll for make your diving wetsuit? super... Um, good fitting, I think is the number one, and uh, open cell, just like a proper spearing wetsuit. Um, nothing lined. Stay away from the, the scuba suits with the big frilly knee pads and stuff like that. They're not really. They're not know, flexible. Some, something flexible, open cell, and uh, good fitting. I got with an awkward story there. So the first open cell wetsuit I bought, I went into the shop, tried it on, <laughs> dry. <laughs> Oh, worst mistake Did you rip ever. It? R- ripped it, and then after that, I kind of did, <laughs> I kind of snuck it out up to the checkout. I felt guilty, and I was like, "All right, how much is it?" <laughs> it didn't even fit that good, but I was just like, "I got to buy it." So they open cell which is some, take a bit of getting used. So you got to yeah, you've got to definitely person. have some sort of lubrication in them. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. So since then, you I'm, can put them on inside out too. I think in, in the, the stores. Shop, yeah. Ah, yeah. one, one wish someone had told that. me that. Yeah. yeah, it's it's difficult to get it off, but so make sure you have someone watching you because it, it might get stuck halfway through taking yeah. it off. Oh no, we're it doing Saturday to morning. <laughs> <laughs> Turbo will definitely be watching. He likes to do that. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. so we're wrapping things up. But um, what sort of um, if you had a call to action for our audience, what would you like? What would you like them to do? Maybe come and have a look at underwater. Allyproductions.com. Yeah, check out underwaterallyproductions.com. Um, you'll see, probably see links to most of our videos on there, and then you know mm. just subscribe Facebook. to the videos on YouTube from there. Cool. Uh, you can find the Facebook same thing page. on Facebook. Yep. What stuff and are you guess, guys working on at the moment for that? Oh, we've got a few things in the pipeline. I won't give too much away right now, but um, oh, come we've got on. a Samoa video. Some footage from Samoa that we've, we've got a lot of footage yeah, from Samoa. So, so much yeah. footage, just, just slowly <laughs> chipping away at it. But um, yeah, just get on the uh, Underwater Ally page and you on Facebook or on the internet and you'll be able to follow the YouTube links and subscribe through there. And um, yeah, I guess the, the most active thing we're doing now is just our Instagram because it's just quick and easy, but just uh, Jesse Cripps or Michael Tack, actually Instagram, you'll find 
the other follow our photos through there. All right, we'll link all that up in the show notes. So good sounds good. Mm, cool. Yeah. All right, well, thanks for talking to us today, guys. Awesome. Yeah, no worries. Thanks for having me. Stay you. on the line. Stay on the line there. All right, thanks, guys. Cheers. See ya. Thanks for listening today, Noob Spiro. If you'd like to find out any more information from today's guest, then head over to noobspiro.com. We really appreciate you guys as listeners. Without you, we couldn't do the show. So if you want to help us out, leave us a review on iTunes or head on over to noobspiro.com and uh, sign up for our newsletter. We won't send you crap. So that's all from us. A big hooroo. We hope to see you soon. Shrek over and out.